Adam, thank you. Well, it may be Congressman Ron Paul's signature legislative achievement, and he's had many. This afternoon, the House approved his bill requiring a regular audit of the Fed. Chief Washington correspondent Peter Cook is on the Hill with the congressman and the, and the once presidential candidate, Peter. Thanks very much. I am joined here by Congressman Paul after a big vote on the House of Representatives floor law. A few years ago, maybe people were dismissing some of your ideas about Fed transparency, Fed oversight. Today, you got a resounding vote in favor of this legislation. Is this a crowning achievement for you? Well, I think it's just a uh, process. We have a long way to go to, to get everything finalized. But I think it's a real achievement to get this much attention on the Federal Reserve because I consider it very, very important. I consider the Federal Reserve responsible for the business cycle, for the booms and the busts, and they do it in secrecy. So therefore, this vote says the people want transparency of the Federal Reserve, and I think that in itself is an achievement. Well, let me ask you about that because you heard some of the debate. You certainly heard what Chairman Bernanke said to you just a few days ago on this topic, that your legislation will create political influence over uh, the Federal Reserve. You'd rather have no Federal Reserve altogether, but uh, some people would suggest if you have to have one, why have one with influence where Congress has this much influence? Uh, I think he's uh, fibbing a little bit there because there's a lot of political influence. I mean, he, uh, he, uh, he bails out companies and banks. Uh, that's a political influence. Why do some people get loans and other people don't? Why does he do it in secrecy? He wants secrecy. He doesn't want independence. He wants secrecy, and that's what the people don't want. When he deals in trillions and trillions of dollars of bailing out very uh, rich financial institutions at the expense of others, does it overseas, $15 trillion they turned during this crisis? The American people deserve to know it. It's our responsibility as members of Congress to do the oversight that is our obligation. Obligation to do. Congressman, I know that Betty and Adam have questions for you as well. Betty? Uh, Congressman, we had some uh, comments earlier. We were talking about uh, too big to manage banks. And you know, we had the stunning reversal uh, by the former Citigroup uh, chairman and CEO, Sandy Weil, who said that he believes now that, uh, in fact, banks are too big to manage and they should be broken up. I want to get your take, Congressman, on those comments. <laughs> Well, that certainly is a mixed bag. I'm not fearful of bigness. If bigness is accomplished through the market, if uh, Apple computers are big because the people vote for them and they, they're the best company, you don't want to break them up. It's, but if bigness comes because they have protections or special benefits and low interest rates by the Federal Reserve and they get uh, good contracts or they're part of the military industrial complex, bigness then is bad. Most bigness comes when when it becomes detrimental, has the advantages of special benefits from the government. So you don't break up bigness for the sake of breaking up bigness. You break up bigness by removing the special benefits and make sure the marketplace is the requirement to satisfy the people in the marketplace for people to get big. But I think the, the, what, you know, what we've talked about, though, and underscoring this, though, is that they're also too big uh, because they, they essentially take taxpayer, I mean, they've taken taxpayer dollars during the crisis, but they also take uh, the public's money through deposits. And so is it really right for these banks to be, uh, quote unquote, playing uh, with the public's money? Yeah, but you don't break up bigness. You remove the guarantees. Uh, they shouldn't be too big to fail. They should fail. Matter of fact, I'm for letting the banks do whatever they want as long as they don't defraud people. But I vote against repealing Glass-Steagall because of for the, exactly the same reason that you mentioned, because it exposed the taxpayer. So I'm not against big banks doing what they want, invest or whatever they want to do, but they shouldn't get the guarantee and they shouldn't have this... Uh, uh, you know, uh, assumption that the government will always rescue, rescue them. Uh, this is the moral hazard in the system. So you remove the moral hazard. You don't just go after the bank and, and say that bigness is bad. You remove the cause of the problem. You know, uh, uh, Representative Paul, I'm, I'm curious about what you just said. You, z you voted against repealing Glass-Steagall. It almost sounds right. like you want the banks to fail and you're setting them up for a fall. That's the only way you'll get your result. Is that true? No, I don't want anybody to fail, but I want people to be responsible. But if they mess up, if they're broke, I don't want them bailed out by the taxpayer. So you don't want failure, you want success. And you're more likely to have honest success if the people are responsible for their investments. But if they always know the Fed is going to be there, the lender of last resource, and all these guarantees, and let them do anything they want, that is wrong. 
but the market is supposed to determine who is successful and who is not. We should be enforcing laws like the bankruptcy laws. People think that because I defend the market that I'm not a regulator. I'm a very strong regulator by the marketplace. I wouldn't allow the government to bail out. I would let the people fail, and that's the way, it's re that's the way it should be regulated by the, f uh, by the laws of economics in the free market. So, Representative Paul, if you could outline for our viewers the Paul plan for the banks. I'd let the banks uh, work like any other corporations. They can't defraud. Uh, they can't uh, uh, create money out of thin air like they do now. They're in cahoots with the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve cr creates the high-powered money, and then the banks, through fractional reserve banking, pretend they have a lot of money. So, no, in a free market, you couldn't do that. You couldn't create money out of thin air, but you would be regulated by fraud laws and bankruptcy laws and uh, obey your contracts if you make contracts. And uh, I know it's pretty hard for people to understand how the market works because they're so used to saying, well, the government's to do this and regulate this and mess things up. All we need are more regulators. And then they, then they compound one air on top of another. There's a saying in free markets that if you create one regulation, you usually get two more problems, so you have to have more regulators. The free market advocates do not accept that as a basic sound principle. Congressman, let me just wrap up here about your legislation, the outlook right now. Do you have any possible prospect? Do you think that the Senate could conceivably pass your legislation? This could actually become the law of the land at this point. And to what extent are you going to push Mitt Romney to adopt these kinds of ideas, particularly this order of the well, Mitt, Mitt has already endorsed my bill. He's done that this week. If the, if the Senate and if Reid had the guts to bring that up on the floor, it would pass because it's so popular. Eighty percent of the American people, uh, you know, do this because they see that the bailouts bailed out the rich, they bailed out Wall Street, bailed out the banks, while the people lost their jobs and they lost their homes and, and they punish it. So if it got to the floor, it would pass. Reid will obstruct the president, I'm sure. The Federal Reserve is still very, very powerful. It's the most powerful institution in the world, so they have a lot of input. So what we did today was a real challenge against the establishment where the big power is and the big money. But the American people, if they had their say in the Senate, the Senate would pass this if it got to the Senate floor. All right, we will watch what happens on the Senate floor. Congressman Ron Paul, thank you for the time, for joining us. A big vote in the House for Congressman Paul's legislation. We'll send back to you guys in New York.